On this worksheet called filter, we've got 700 items here, 700 employee names, and we don't always want to see all the data. We might want to see, for example, just the full-time people or just those people with a certain job rating or maybe a combination of the two or three items based on the field names that we see here. The filtering capability of Excel hides the data we don't want to see. Simply click within the data. Now, as with other database type features, as long as you know that your data has no empty rows or empty columns within the list, you do not have to select all the data before activating the filter capability. From the Home tab, you could start with the Sort and Filter button off to the right in the Editing group, and from there choose Filter, or maybe more directly, same number of clicks, go to the Data tab and choose Filter. This introduces filter arrows for each field. We only want to see the full-time people, for example. We'll click the arrow for status, and here's our list of all possibilities in the column. We can unselect them all and then check the box for full-time. Click OK. We're only viewing the full-time people. How many records does this represent? Lower left-hand corner of the screen, 393 of the 741 records. Recognize the row numbers here off to the left. Whenever they're blue, it means we're not seeing all of the data. And you can see they're not consecutive numbers there. We've hidden some of the other rows. And while we're looking at these full-time people, maybe we want to narrow down the list further by simply choosing the ones that have a job rating of 5. So we'll go to column I, click the drop arrow for job rating, unselect all of them, and then check the box for 5, which is our highest job rating. Click OK. And now we're seeing only 102 records. And the purpose here is not always to pare down the list to make it small. We're looking at the list of information that's important to us right now. If we only want to see those above a certain year in terms of experience, we can click the arrow for column F. And here it might be a little bit different. We're probably not trying to find people who've been here eight years, nine years, 10 years specifically. So we might want to go to number filters. Excel picks up the idea that this column has numbers in it. So we see number filters displayed to the right. We wouldn't see some of these choices if it were a text field. So we might want to see all of those who have been here greater than or equal to 10 years. So we'll simply put in the 10 right here. And now the list is even shorter. It's down to 31. Possibly we want to print this or copy it somewhere. If we print this list now, we could go to Print Preview with Control F2, or we could go to the File command and choose Print and get a brief look of how that's going to appear on the printed page. We could certainly do that. Only the visible data would be printed. Let's escape from here. If we were to copy paste this list, Excel picks up only the visible data. We don't have to worry about what's hidden there. So if we copy paste this data, we will only see this data. None of the data in hidden rows will appear when we paste this data somewhere else. If we want to bring back all the data, we could certainly go to each column here and choose select all. But if we've got a few columns active, and by the way, notice that if a column is being used in the filter, the icon, instead of being an arrow, actually has a filter icon on it. There's an icon here for status, and off to the right, there's one under job rating, there's one under year. So those, you might say, are the active fields right now in the filter. If we want to bring back all of our data, simply use the clear button up above or turn off the filter. But let's say we want to do some more filtering, so let's clear the filter. If you work with date fields, there's a tremendous opportunity here to pare down data by date. Let's check out some of the options here. Click the drop arrow for a higher date. We could narrow down the data by year. Date filters, again, recognize how Excel picks up on the fact that we have date entries there. And this is pretty amazing, some of the features that you can get to here. All the entries from a certain week, last month, this month, next month. 
And don't overlook the fact that as we drag down to the very bottom here, all dates in the period, you could isolate the May sales data or the February sales data, narrow down the data by quarter. So quite a few different options here using date filters for those kinds of columns. And as suggested earlier, we can certainly do this along with other filters as well. Occasionally you might use filter in column A because you can do searching here. Maybe I'm looking for a certain person. If we click the drop arrow here, maybe I'm looking for someone named Robert. So as I start to type R here, automatically it's showing me names that have R in them. That's probably going to be pretty large. As I type O and then B, it's narrowed down all the Roberts. I'll click OK. We're seeing all of those. Some people might have the last name of Roberts or Robertson's, R-O-B-E-R-T, wherever it appears, there it is. You can leave these arrows on indefinitely. It doesn't necessarily disrupt what you're doing, but I think as a general rule, you want to take them off if you're not doing any filtering. You may have worked with tables in Excel. They automatically give you filter arrows. There, too, you can turn them off. So if we want to bring back all the data and we no longer want to use the feature for a while, we'll simply click the Filter button. But I think you recognize that this feature gives us quick access to just the data we want to see by hiding the data we don't need right now.